Yes, ladies and gentlemen, episode 9 of Pokemon Horizons titled Arrival in Paldea just dropped, and our heroes arrive in Paldea so the Volt Tacklers can pick up their payment for being the bodyguard for Liko at her school. However, it seems like Liko's father doesn't want her to continue her adventures. Let's see how this plays out. Brave Asagi arrives in Paldea. Liko overhears talking of this being the final time she might get to see the Volt Tacklers. When she leaves the ship, Roy wants to come to Paldea to explore, so she says yes. They get to Mesagosa and she shows them around. It looks like the anime took Narana Academy as Demon Academy, the Orange Academy, so the colors of all the students in this series will be orange. Afterward, Free tries to call Liko's mother, but she isn't picking up, so instead, they head to Liko's house to meet where her father is. Remember, it was Liko's mom who hired the Volt Tacklers. Dot, whose Nido thing costume stinks, goes outside to let her outfit dry out. While coming back in, Ludlow tells Dot that caring, when not pretending to, is like not caring at all. He's hinting at the fact that while Dot acts ambivalent towards Liko, she does really care for her. Liko's sad that she'll have to leave the Volt Tacklers here. As we get to her house, which is the protagonist's house from the game, her father's Fido welcomes her. Then her father, Alex, comes out to introduce himself to Freed and Roy. When Roy introduces himself and Liko as a Volt Tackler, Freed changes the subject and talks about Alex's painting. When Liko heads to her room, Sprigatito, who has been upset since her Fido came out and greeted her, leaves to go to the roof of the house. As she's searching for it, she overhears her father talking about being worried about her. He wondered if she could deal with being by herself, and he was also thinking of keeping her home. If she needed to, she could commute to the school, but he wants her to not continue her adventure. As Liko's listening in on this, she bumps into the window and makes noise, giving away the fact that she was listening in to their conversation. She makes the excuse that she was searching for Sprigatito, which while true, avoids the question of her listening in. It also seems like Sprigatito is still upset at her and refuses to go with her back to the ship. So Liko tells her dad that since he has a project to finish, she's going to go back to the ship for the night and she'll be back in the morning. When she gets back to the ship, she says that I'm home by habit. I really like this section of the episode. It's not hard to pick up what's going on. Liko wants to stay with the Volt Tacklers and not stay home. However, it's not explicitly said by anyone here either. It's all facial reactions, music, mannerisms. I think it's wonderfully done. On the positive, it does seem like Fido and Sprigatito are getting along better. She stays in the ship overnight, not being able to sleep well, thinking it'll be her last night. When she leaves her room, she sees a drawing from Dot showing her in the ship with Sprigatito. As she walks into the kitchen where Orla and Molly are, she smells her father's coffee. When she tells him that she didn't know how much he was worried about her, they tell her that the only thing that matters is what she wants to do. As she's about to head out, she also stumbles upon Roy who thinks that the reason Sprigatito is mad at her is because she was showing Fido so much attention and got jealous. So with everyone's encouragement on the whole situation, Liko decides that she will tell her father that she wants to stay with the ship. She thanks Dot and tells her that she'll return and heads out to buy her father's favorite coffee. She also sees the Nido thing costume but she has no time to think about that. As she's heading home, since Sprigatito isn't with her, she doesn't have a way to defend herself against wild Pokemon. So as she's walking home with her father's coffee and cake, she's attacked by Lechonk, who steals her bag of food. She starts chasing after it, and Sprigatito, seeing that she hasn't come back, runs to her aid. Freed, who wants to talk to Liko's father, goes to the house thinking that Liko's already there, but is surprised when he finds out she isn't there yet. Sprigatito finally gets to Liko, who's being chased and attacked by Lechonk, and tackles it, getting the food back to Liko. She then battles Lechonk, having Sprigatito use Quick Attack, which sends Lechonk packing. Back in the house, Freed tells her father all about what Liko's gone through. And I think he might have told him that he also wants Liko to stay, because he tells Freed that maybe he was just too worried about her because she was growing up so fast. Liko then comes into the house and tells her father that she wants to stay with the Rising Volt Tacklers. She was nervous at first, but just like her grandmother said, with Pokemon by her side, she can go on adventures. Her father, seeing how Liko feels, allows her to stay with the Rising Volt Tacklers and adventure to the future. And that was great. While similar to the Bianca situation in Black and White, this one was a lot more different in nature. While both were because their father were worried, Bianca's dad was a lot more forceful about about not wanting Bianca to leave, while Liko here got to make her own choice, and it made it feel like she got to grow up a bit more, showing character development for her. With that being sorted, they then ask Alex about the Black Rayquaza that came to Paldea, and while Alex hasn't seen it, he knows another artist, Brassius, the artisan gym leader, who has been talking about a rare Pokemon recently. And with that information, Liko and Freed set off for the boat, as they know their next destination. They wave goodbye to Alex and Fido, and that's the end of the episode. This was a really good episode. Not a lot of actions besides a small battle, but very emotionally charged episode. We get to see not only what Alex and Liko felt about Liko's journey so far, but also we get to see that Dot really does care for Liko. And it looks like Dot will be more involved with the story going forward. I can't wait. Also, I'm starting to get a feel for what this series is going to be like. I remember when Roy's motivation first came out, people said they don't want another ghost story. And I think the writers also realized that. So it looks like his goal is actually what's going to be driving the plot forward. And unlike other Pokemon shows in the past, you're not really going to be able to predict how the show 
show is going to go because it's taking a more serialized approach like other anime instead of taking a Pokemon game type of approach. Usually you could predict what's happening in the anime because it follows the game so close but here that's not going to be the case. And with our heroes finally doing stuff from Paldea, I can't wait to see how it goes. Especially with Nimona debuting next episode, the series really feels like it's picking up. I can't wait. What about you guys? Let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at TheRealPDGaming and that's it. I will talk to you guys later. Peace.